Hello, everyone. I'm Janet Salmons, Research Community Manager for Sage Method Space, and I'm pleased to be joined here today by Marta Eichseller and Howard Davis, who are co-authors of the book Biographical Research Methods. But before we start talking about those methods, um, if you are new to Method Space, uh, this is a blog community uh, sponsored by Sage Publishing. And we are interested in all things to do with designing, planning, conducting, analyzing research, writing about it, sharing results in all kinds of ways. And as you can see at the heart of this Venn diagram, we have teaching and learning, because we think that whether you are a new student or an experienced researcher, we all have something to learn. And I hope that you'll find something new to learn uh, today as we have this conversation. So um, to get started, um, why don't you uh, introduce yourselves? And Marta, why don't you start? Uh, hi, my name is Marta Eichsteller, and I'm an assistant professor and ad astra fellow at University College Dublin, Ireland. Uh, and I had the pleasure to co-author the book on biographical research methods. Uh, I've been kind of working with biographical research methods for, well, now over 12 years now. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been part of the big uh, Your Identities project uh, with Howard, who was also my supervisor, PhD supervisor. <laughs> and uh, after finishing my PhD and doing quite a lot of other work on top of that, I also started to develop my own kind of research practice mm -hmm. and going outside of the academia, doing quite a lot of research consultancy with the kind of think tanks and, you know, kind of international mm -hmm. development as well, uh, kind of doing and advising people how to do life history research. And after kind of being in academia and outside of the academia doing kind of biographical research and biographical related research, I kind of decided that it would be good to kind of pull it all together and mm -hmm. kind of do and kind of try to figure it out how to help people do biographical research methods kind of in a little more, more consistent way and kind of, you know, put it all together in one place mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and kind of decided to put it together with the book. And this is kind of how I got here. <laughs> well, I think that uh, your experience is, is very relevant to our methods-based readers who are both in academia and outside of academia um, and people with a wide range of interest. And uh, so, Howard, tell us about where you're coming from. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm an emeritus professor now at Bangor University in Wales, uh, United Kingdom. And um, in the latter part of my career, I've uh, been involved in several projects using biographical narrative data, um, including the project that uh, Marta mentioned. Um, as well as that, I have an interest in post-Soviet societies mm -hmm. and um, the relevance of that might become clear as we go on in this conversation. Yes, uh, certainly very timely. So just um, to begin with, for those who might not be familiar, um, how do you define biographical research methods? Generally, when we think about biographical research methods, uh, depending on where you're going in the world, uh, is it in North American context, European context, or even kind of more globally in the kind of Africa or Southeast where I've been working with, people will have a very different association of what biographical research method me means. So if you're going to North America, very often people will think, oh, archive research or historical research, mm -hmm. or like, you know, Abraham Lincoln, you know, this kind of, right. you know, yeah. historical figures. If you're going to, for example, European context, people will think, well, autobiographical research. So, you know, mm -hmm. you're going and, and reading people's memoirs or, you know, mm -hmm. diaries. Very often in kind of dusty libraries somewhere. Mm -hmm. But that's also part of the biographical research methods, historical research, the memories, the, the, that kind of things. But biographical research generally means stories and life, life stories of people. So mm -hmm. the kind of research where people answer the question, please tell me your life story. And that, mean, that may mean historical stories. So something would happen in the past, people who are not, not longer here, mm -hmm. but more and probably more relevant to us as a kind of sociologist right now, 
that also may mean people who are you know contemporaries of us people mm -hmm. who are mm -hmm. here, who are kind of answering the question you know and telling us their life stories as they unfolding right now so people whom we actually go and ask please tell us your life story the way you think it unfolded with all the turning points and what happened for to you to that you actually arrived to this place right here right now mm -hmm. and that particular biographical research is is kind of an act of storytelling but the storytelling when individual is, is telling us not only their own kind of experience experiences but also tells us about the world out, around that individual mm -hmm. Uh, society, the changes in the society, the all the important decisions that individual made within that society mm -hmm. that led that person to that particular point they are in, in right here, right now, in that time. Mm -hmm. And depending what discipline are you in, uh, you may be more interested in that society, that changes in that society. So I am sociologist, I'm more interested in that. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, the system of education, you know, what happens to you or the, you know, the health of that individual, mm -hmm. or I may be interested in gender, uh, but you may be more kind of inclined to read into it more about that individual. So the mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, what was that individual thinking on, um, mm -hmm. or how was that individual developing in that society? So more mm -hmm. about, you know the individual part of it uh, you may be more interested in the historical part a childhood part you may, may be more interested in kind of kind of bigger historical events uh, especially for example if it happened in a particular historical context like soviet union context or second world war memories or that kind of thing mm -hmm. so depending what disciplines you're coming into it you you may kind of focus your analysis in the different aspects of it. But generally, generally speaking, it, does, it is all about stories and it's all about society and individual kind of playing in that particular stories. Now, obviously there would be a different varieties of those stories and those biographies. There would be an auto ethnographies, uh, auto ethnographies, so people telling the whole story in mm -hmm. one go. Uh, there would be kind of more structured stories when people are asking a specific, you know, periods. And can you tell me about your childhood? Can you tell me about your education? Can you tell me about the story of your illness, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me about, you know, the the story of your relationship with your parents through mm -hmm. your life? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you can structure it very differently, and you know, you can ask more structured question. It can be more kind of disjointed, you know can be kind of, you know, particular stories about specific kind of elements of the life story. There is a variety of design of life stories, you know, as you kind of put it together, there are different schools of it. So, the, you know, there is a whole richness and many, many different schools how you can ask people to deliver biography and many, many different schools about how you can analyze them and how you can kind mm -hmm. of turn them around and, and put together. Uh, so there is a lot of things you can do with them, but more or less, this is what biographical research would be very much about. I don't know, Howard, would you like, you probably would like well, to add something. <laughs> I think you've certainly conveyed what is quite complex about the yeah. definition, and there is no simple definition of uh, mm -hmm. biographical research. And, um, you know, different labels are used. So autobiography, mm -hmm. life history, life stories, um, many other variants on that, so like autoethnography auto and, and so on. But um, the other thing to remember is it has quite a long history. You know, it goes back to the really the early years of um, sociology, particularly as a discipline, um, and it's been evolving continuously since then. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's, it's it's quite a flexible kind of a you know set of methods. It sounds like because you know as you say, I mean you can go from the more micro level of the individual. You know how do I make choices? What are the influences? What are the experiences? Versus how am I this person within society 
within a culture and economy and you know within world events you know or within local events so uh, it, it really offers researchers a, a lot of directions to go i mean i know uh, in some of my research way back when i started out looking at one thing and then you know there was a particular figure within that um, phenomenon i was studying whose experience was so unique and so interesting that you know i ended up kind of you know adding some of that biographical piece because it was so uh illustrative of you know the you know kind of the decisions and the influences and and you know it helped to really tell that bigger story so you know it seemed like a set of methods that could be used in conjunction with other types of research so you know thinking about the kinds of data you know as you mentioned marta you know there some kinds that of you know historical archival um research and some more contemporary style so maybe talk about sort of the the difference between data that you might be finding reading in, in archives libraries or even personal co collections uh, from you know someone's um life they might you know choose to share with you versus uh the kinds of data that you might uh, generate uh, yeah, I, I could comment on that. I think the um, the core, in a way, is the face-to-face -face interview, mm -hmm. uh, extended, deep, qualitative type of interview where you allow as much space as possible um, to the interviewee to develop their storytelling um, in their own way, not guided mm -hmm. by the, the researcher. But of course, that's um, it's not the only thing. And um, in archives and so on, we find diaries, uh, autobiographical accounts, which may not have been previously published um, in contemporary social media. You know, there's a huge amount of biographical uh, data and storytelling in various mm -hmm. forms. Um, and we can use all of those. Uh, sometimes combined, uh, you know, some of the classic studies in using biographical research uh, have combined personal diaries with uh, narrative interviews. So um, I think the best way to, to learn about all this is to follow, you know, some of the researchers who've made this uh, a central part of their work and learn, you know, how they've applied the methods and um, the conclusions they've been able to draw. And that's, that's how we've uh, structured the book in a way, mm -hmm. with lots and lots of examples. So is there anything you would like to add, Marta, about types of data and the ways that you amass it from either collecting or generating it? The other thing is that naturally the biographical data also can come with the other type of methods and can be kind of mashed out with the other type of methods. So when they kind of occur naturally, either with diaries of the interviews, that's one thing. But what we come to see is that they increasingly becoming add in to the other type of data. So what we see is that they naturally started to kind of be add on to the survey panel data, for example. So they naturally becoming kind of extended to the mixed methods design. Okay. Uh, as a kind of qualitative extension to the quantitative, quantitative mm -hmm. data sets. Uh, is it good or so, bad? Is so it, uh, in other words, you know, for researchers maybe conducted a survey and gotten like, well, here's a broad view of how people experienced this situation and then now d delve into using biographical methods and the qualitative piece to look at well here are you know here's someone's particular experience so exactly. you know, today you know we might say well you know here's what the you know society is undergoing in, in the situation in ukraine well, here's what you know one particular person is ex how they are experiencing it yes. and you know as we know no, I mean, those kind of, one, it's, it's kind of yeah it's the kind of typical trajectories of you know all kind of understanding first more about how people experiencing that 
and use it to explain what we see in a big data sets, uh, kind of across mm -hmm. the kind of panel studies, for example. Or are we using it kind of to understand better ethnographies as well, kind of, so even the mm -hmm. qualitative data sets, you know, to have this kind of historical understanding of biographies mm -hmm. to kind of add more deeper understanding of qualitative sets. You, we kind of using biographical research to kind of even deeper that kind of historical mm -hmm. dimension. So you know what's happening on the street, so to say, but mm -hmm. in order to kind of have this historical or this kind of time specific dimension mm -hmm. uh, to the qualitative data set, you would use biographical methods to, to add that kind mm -hmm. of additional aspects to it. So we see that kind of that, you know, with the data, you would generate this additional thing by adding this biographical dimension mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, so on top of, you know, to add additional dimension, you would, you, you would add, you generate the biographical data and add it on to this mixed methods design. Mm -hmm. And we see it quite strongly that it kind of, it has been kind of mashed on, but because of that, it needs to stand methodologically very strongly with those methods. And mm -hmm. those are very well established methods and very kind of methodologically well developed. So, you know, if you want to add on the biographical on top of those methods, you really need to be confident and you really need to be strong on those as well. Mm -hmm. So, because you cannot just add them on and, you know, just, just right. as an adult, they really need to strongly stand with those methods as well. Yeah. So otherwise they're just gonna be kind of just hanging there. Yeah, that's right, too fragmented. Yeah. So, uh, you know, thinking about the, the types of data, I mean, just from what you've described, it would sound like a, a researcher might have written materials, either contemporary or historic, um, as well as verbal, you know, recordings. Um, you might have, you know, for that context, a larger context, maybe either from your own research or from other kinds of data sets that might be quantitative or, you know, large scale that would say, well, here are, you know, the three biggest trends in technology or in culture and then you know so you've got that you know that big data you're trying to explain so but then it would also seem that you would have um visual data photographs and uh perhaps artwork artifacts um yeah. and and things like that you know so do you find that those are an important piece of the kinds of data that that biographical researchers would use yes you can elicit some of the narrative stories with pictures, with video materials. That's, that has been techniques which has been used. Some people use artwork to help people, you know, tell the stories. Some people use walking interviews that, you know, allow people to just tell the story while, while they're strolling through the meaningful, meaningful places. Mm -hmm. Some people use performance art uh, that, you know, tell the story while dancing or telling the story through the, you know, drama and, you know, kind of that kind of things. So there is a lot of kind of different kind of links and bridges, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of that kind of things also is happening. So there is few things that, that are happening there as well. Yeah. Um, so I want to switch gears a little bit and, and you've kind of mentioned the distinction between certainly could be interrelated, but the distinction between the more historical uh, styles of biographical research that, you know, many people kind of, you know, would, would define as biographical research, but how might you use these methods for, to study contemporary crises, you know, social unrest or environmental problems or uh, the kinds of, um, you know, war and violence and, you know, all of the, the current things that we're reading about in the news every day, you know, how would you use uh, those methods in to study the things that are happening right now? So, uh, so generally biography is this kind of idea that, you know, we studying, you know, the how people are telling or narrating the story of what happened to them in life. Mm -hmm. So by definition, they will pick up on the contemporary events or, you know, that shape their decision-making and 
whatever they the shapes their individual turning points so if they experience a specific type of crisis it's specific type of events the, you know and make the decision on them you know this is you know what we will pick up in their individual biographies so any type of kind of turning points that that kind of shape their decision making may it be a war uh, or you know an economic crisis uh, mm -hmm. that kind of make them choose particular type of decision uh, will be something we would pick up in a biography and kind of depending on what you study we will try to explore how that person felt about it mm -hmm. but also you know how you know what kind of level of control that person had mm -hmm. and you know what made that person behave in a specific way you know what you know was it a you know the decision to flee or was it the decision to react or was it the decision to to just kind of you know control the situation for example you know was it a controlled action or was it a kind of just reaction for example mm -hmm. so that kind of you know decision making process would be something we would be very much interested in but this is really what would, we would be interested in biographical research. And this is how we would study, for example, crisis. So we would be try, you know, this is how we would approach that. So we would be searching for that kind of patterns in biography. Mm -hmm. And this is how we would kind of try to, this is the kind of elements we would be searching for mm -hmm. in biographical research. Now, with that in mind, we would be collecting the stories that of the events we would be you know as a researcher we would be interested in so we would be collecting a specific type of stories and those type of stories that we are interested in right now is up to you as a researcher to choose from so howard is probably you know howard had his own particular interests in specific type of you know post-Soviet society, so he can talk about this probably the mo more, you know, now. <laughs> Do you yeah, want to say yeah. anything? Yeah. It's a good illustration of, um, you know, the challenge we face when uh, there are social crises. I mean, what, what you've described actually is, uh, is the constant change which individuals face uh, in their biographical journeys, and there's always crises along the way, you know, birth, death, and all the rest of it. Uh, but um, social crises are somewhat different in that they are collective processes mm -hmm. which um, compel these um, decisions to be made, often in situations of great disruption and danger. So, um, you know, wartime is a is kind of fundamental example of that. Um, and it takes away a lot of the things that we take for granted as social science scientists um, in terms of background and contextual information mm -hmm. you know because what happens and it's happening uh, in Russia and between Russia and Ukraine currently is that the established data that we might expect to have as social scientists in relation to you know quite developed societies mm -hmm. is simply not there anymore so we can't rely at all on um, uh, survey data or polling data from Russia. It's become a pure instrument of propaganda. Right. Um, and we're floundering in a sense because that data is not available. And in the middle of a war, of course, the infrastructure for collecting and processing data is also uh, damaged and sometimes right. disappears completely. Right. So here, you know, here comes biographical uh, research and biographical data as a very helpful alternative mm -hmm. because as long as people uh, can continue to tell their stories and we can access right. that then um, we have some hope because you know right. a good biography um, tells us a great deal about the individual but also about the context in which they they live and survive mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that's particularly important at the moment in right. you know, those spaces like Russia, where we feel really very remote and detached. But actually, there are ways of accessing 
uh, individual stories uh, and gaining the trust uh, of people who will you know, be glad to right. tell their stories. Right, right. In situations where, I mean, whether it's whether it's a war or it's, you know there's been a fire or a natural disaster, where sometimes you know the libraries and the archives and the things we've trusted as repositories for you know the history of that community or of that country are are, are no longer available but um you know and i think about the you know say you know what what's still in the living memory of people i mean where i live in the western part of the united states you know that there are you know the native americans who's um you know they you know their grandparents stories you know things that you know as a kid growing up in the U.S., you think, ah, oh, you know, that's like long, long ago. You know, like that's history, slavery and westward expansion. You know, this like, you know, that was like way back when. But it's still alive in the memories of those individuals and their families, and how that those things have influenced people over time would be um, so interesting. You know, as um, you know, not to replace other kinds of of uh, data, but you know, to provide some you know, as you're saying, Marta, you know, understanding what the turning points are and what are the motivating factors, you know, whether, you know, do you have, you know, in some cases, maybe you don't have a choice at all, but, you know, where you have a choice, you know, what what are the factors that influence it? You, you could see how, you know, these kinds of um, methods, you could be looking at economic, technological, social, culture, psychological, you know, all kinds of different um, approaches. So, so thinking about uh, your book as a um, an opportunity for people to to learn more about um, these kinds of approaches, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit, uh, give us a little overview of the book and and how people might use it. Shall I start? Go for um, it. I, th I, I, I think the um, you know. Part of the target audience is students who are thinking about or planning projects that might or might not use biographical uh, data. And um, it's designed to be as accessible mm -hmm. as possible um, so that somebody who doesn't really know anything very much uh, about this tradition, you know, has access both to um, the story of how it developed, but abundant examples of how it's been applied in a whole variety of, of contexts. Um, and I think that is also a clue to another audience, which is people who uh, may be working in um, social policy or applied social profession mm -hmm. um, or development studies, for example, um, might see how this type of research can support their own work um, maybe through uh, not necessarily doing it themselves, but learning uh, from others who've used these methods uh, to collect and analyze the data. Um, so I think it's a fairly, you know, it's a, a clearly a teaching text mm -hmm. in many ways, but it's also quite instructive for people who uh, are working in, in other fields related to um, social change and development. Yeah, our aim was generally to provide not only an overview of the toolkit of the, you know, there is a couple of, you know, there is generally a variety of different approaches to the biographical methods, mm -hmm. but also to show people how to analyze and how to do and how, how things are being kind of processed and done. So not only how to collect the data, because that's mostly what the methods handbooks normally focus on mm -hmm. is about how to gather the data but i think more complex and more advanced kind of type of doing biographical researches so you have the data what what's next is mm -hmm. the analysis mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of more complex part of it and then there is this next stage of it is about the development of the methods is about, you know, how they kind of start to interact with the other methods. It's mm -hmm. the mixed methods designs uh, where they actually have to stand against all the kind of more complex and more established this, you know, kind of methodologies with, you know, 
panel surveys and ethnographies and and they really have to stand to scrutiny and 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 kind of hold their own uh, and you know be kind of sound and kind of confidence in themselves that you know that they have things to offer and and be kind of mm -hmm. strong enough to to also know what they contribute to those designs as well so that's that's the kind of the the the, the third part of it so this is where kind of i wanted to make sure that the people who kind of read the book and you know may it be students but also practitioners and people who kind of mm -hmm try to kind of use that kind of data, have the kind of resource that they can actually go in and, you know, find the information that, you know, they know where they're standing with the methods mm -hmm. and actually kind of use it, apply it and make sure that, you know, what they have at hand is kind of reliable and, and applicable, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of in a solid way. Mostly because I, when I started to do it, and and then when I was kind of doing it, especially outside of the academia, I did not have that kind of toolkit. Right. Uh, so I was pro probably writing it a little bit to myself as well. Right. <laughs> so, right. I could see how you know people, you know, whether they started out designing a study where they intended to use biographical methods, or you know, whether, you know, kind of getting into a study and finding that, you know, I need, I need the individual story to, to be able to understand, you know, that, uh, that, that people who are, you know, in the midst of this phenomenon, whatever it is I'm studying, uh, and, and then think, well, how do I do that? You know, that this could be a, a real kind of just in time, a useful yeah. text for people who, you know, just, you know, realize things that we've been talking about, the value of, of, of looking at the bigger picture from the individual stance or from, you know, from a group of individuals uh, who are experiencing this phenomenon in, in different kinds of ways. Um, so, well, um, thank you for uh, joining me for this uh, conversation and explaining a little bit about uh, biographical methods and, you know, kind of new and, and traditional ways of doing it. And as you say, you know, the importance of then figuring out, well, once you've got the data, how am I going to analyze and make meaning from this um, that will, you know, help to really, you know, answer my research question or, or illuminate this research problem. So uh, thank you for, for uh, giving us a little bit of uh, insight about that and, and also uh, telling us about your your new book. Thank you for having us. Thank you.